We are live, everyone. First solo live stream since game 161. What is up? Just want to make sure how many people we got in here. We got one person in here. Um, Sergeant Gibby, as usual, is up. All right, man. Looking good. All right. First solo live stream in quite a while, guys. Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Philly Sound Stove Media, and today we're going to be having a uh, baseball is back live stream. Of course, I did make a video last night talking about uh, the new CBA agreeing, being agreed on by the MLB and the MLB Players Union. Uh, so we are back in action, everyone. Now, guys, before we get into this live stream, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Uh, so uh, welcome in, everyone. Uh, first, as I said, first solo live stream since uh, game 161 against the Miami Marlins. Which was, uh, I believe that was the, was that the game? No, we lost that game. Yeah, yeah, we lost, we lost that game. Yeah, we are live. So I wonder where Freddie Freeman's going to go, right? You heard about the Rays. They offered him a contract before uh, the lockout took place. And, uh, you know, Dave Roberts making some comments about him today. You know, let's pray. Let's hope that he does go to uh, the uh, uh, team like the Tampa Bay Rays or the Dodgers. Or the Yankees would be the best fit, at least for me. I mean, you never really have to see him that much. This would just be a wonderful thing. Just as long as he doesn't go back to the Braves, I'll be very, very happy. I'm sure Sergeant Gibby uh, is not going to like me saying that. Um, but uh, what was it? Brandon Workman. Yeah, former Phil Brandon Workman going to uh, Texas on a minor league deal. What is up? Thank you for being supportive on Instagram. Appreciate it. Yeah. I just don't think the, the Rays just don't have the money. Yo, what is up, man? It's a Mets talk with Hayden sub right there. Ethan, what's good, man? Um, you know, honestly, I think that he's the kind of guy that I, I kind of consider him more of a homer. I'm, I'm surprised that it's that he didn't resign with the Braves. Uh, I'm surprised he even entered the market, to be honest with you. And the fact that he's – it's, it's kind of hard to tell, though, because he didn't really have much time in the market before, uh, you know, the obvious happened where the, the players uh, got locked out. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. I don't. I think we have a good chance of getting. I really do. I mean, you saw the report from Heyman today about how uh, how Harper's pushing for him, and there's a lot of connections here. And this thing makes a lot of sense. I do. I I think that there's a legit chance he could end up here. Um, I'm not too sure, uh, but uh, yeah, I predicted the Mariners. I think at the very beginning. I don't think he ends up there. I honestly, I think he could fall in the Phillies' lap. I mean, possibly, possibly. Phillies always get relievers at the worst time. Every time they get a new piece. Uh, they collapse after a decent season. Yeah, it happens every single year. Happened in 2020 in a short season. It was all a condensed version of it. It was a 162 condensed to the 60 game. Workman is worse than a minor league. <laughs> He's literally worse <laughs> than a typical high school pitcher. Oh, he is. He's just he, he was just awful. Awful, 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 awful. You could say awful probably a million times, and it probably wouldn't be enough awfuls how, to, to describe how bad that guy is. I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, he's, he's kind of inconsistent. Depends on how much. It all depends on how much we pay him. Um, you know, I think that if you pay him like over like twenty million dollars a year, then that's where I'm kind of going to be stepping away. In my opinion, I really don't know if he's really worth that much. I don't really think he is worth that much. Uh, you know, it's just he's just like inconsistent. He really hasn't been the same player since like 2018. Um, so I'm just been kind of disappointing him. He's had a lot of injuries. I mean, of course, he can play, you know, you know, third base, left field. He could slide around a little bit. But um, I don't know. I just really like the Harper connection. I think that that's why the Phillies are really connected to him. And also there, there's a void. There is a void over there uh, and on, the, on the left side of the field. Uh, you know, not just infield or outfield, just the left side of the field, especially with Alec Bone probably being the Phillies' DH now. Uh, do you think that the Phillies will change for Craig Krimble? No, I do not. Um, I, my opinion has not changed from the from the trade deadline of 2021. Workman sucks. El Mayo. My memories of him are blowing games in the eighth and ninth inning against you, right? Against you, against your team. Yeah, yeah. Your team was the one that you know really just <laughs> you know shoved it to him. Oh my gosh. I think that was. I think was that. Wait, remember? I think that was where he made his Phillies debut, right? Against the Braves, right? Uh, in 2020 at uh, Truist Park, right? I, I think. What's well, Corey Canable? He's made the new closer. He's not. They already said he's not. 
I thought I think he should be, but it, I, I know a report came out a while ago. I said he, he's not. Chances of getting Kyle Schwarber, I, I think, are pretty high. I mean, I, I hope and pray that we get him. I, I love Kyle Schwarber. I think he's a great fit for this team if we can get him at the right price. Um, I'm definitely a big fan. I'm definitely a big fan. I mean, I, one thing I don't really like is that you know the average is a little bit low. This guy gets on base. Don't like his defense, but uh, I think this is going to be a guy you see some time at DH too. Um, I think you're going to see that. Do you see the Phillies resigning McCutcheon? No, I do not. Um, and you know, you know what the thing is is that, like I understand they declined the option, but they're not going to pay him <laughs> when he was due. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, there's maybe a slim chance that they could you know, re-sign him. Uh, I, I just don't see that happening. I think we need to get, we need to get younger. We need to get new guys out there. I mean, I like Kutch a lot, but uh, maybe on a bench roll, I wouldn't mind it, but I, I don't, I just don't see that happening. I said, I, I said Foley's versus Angels World Series. I bet you, I bet you want that uh, to happen. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Oh, I just said a voice repair. That would be interesting uh, <laughs> uh, to see that happen, uh, especially, you know, with Mike Trout, you know, playing against the Phils in World Series. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, like two, two of the, like the most failure teams over the last like you know five six years playing in the World Series. That'd be really really interesting. I think Phillies finished se- uh, eighty seven and seventy five. Yeah, I predicted last year. I think I predicted eighty six and seventy six. Um, you know, that, I mean, honestly, I could see them finishing around. You know, right right now, absolutely not. I mean, they're they're a below five hundred team right now. But um, if they really really bolster this bullpen and they haven't done anything over the past 24 hours and everybody's flipping out and thinking like, oh, well, why haven't they done anything? What do you think is going to happen? Like the lockout just ends and all of a sudden they're going to sign all these you know, sign all these guys. I mean, Dave has a lot of work to do, but they got to be patient here. It's a, patience isn't a thing in Philadelphia. Uh, make a wild card. Yeah, well, it's going to be easier now Yeah, with the 12 team, you know, playoff. As a Mets fan, I think the Phillies should really, really try to get Castellanos. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just too expensive. You know, I, I, we need to invest in the bullpen. Enough of this, all this offense. Who should be the Phillies' new closer if Knable isn't going to be? I mean, I would say like go after Kenley Jansen, but he's a choker in the postseason. He's a choker in the postseason. I do think that Corey Knable should be the closer. He's not going to be, but he should be. Uh, but uh, you know, possibly. I mean, do you go after Kenley Jansen? I mean, he, he's he has a lot of experience. He's had a good career. I mean, he's not good in the postseason. That's what I really don't like about him. He's, he's not. I mean, so I think it's a tough call. I mean, there's a there's a pretty good market out there. I just think it's a tough call. Do you think Archer Bradley will come back? I think it's possible. I mean, I, I, could, I could definitely see that happening. But another guy battled a lot of injuries. He was good for that, you know, that stretch probably. And what was it like, you know, maybe mid-July, like to like mid-August. But after that, he was absolutely terrible. Um, you know, he wasn't good at the beginning of the season. Of course, he had, you know, some injury issues and, you know, things of that nature. But he pretty much just had one good month of the season. That was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. Pretty disappointing. Other than that, I was not really impressed with his performance. Probably Jose Alvarado saved me. Oh, my gosh. I hope not. Remember that? Remember, they, you know, Joe, uh, Joe Girardi tried that out for a little bit. You remember that? I think it was late June against the New York Mets. Remember, he finally uh, stopped using Hector as the closer, and then he put uh, Jose in there, and he wasn't any different. <sighs> And you can't really put that on Joe. I mean, he has like pretty much nothing to work with. Where do you think Story will go? I think he goes to Houston. I don't know. I forget why I said he was going to go on the free. I don't. I don't know if I even included him in the top ten video. That was like back in like November. I don't remember. Um, but uh, I honestly can see him going to Houston. I mean, they're not going to get Correa back, and I think Houston wants to continue to remain competitive. So I think that Story would be, of course, not as good as Correa, but I think he'd be still, you know, you know, get, they get some decent production and sort still from uh, Carlos Correa, or excuse me, from Trevor Story. I think the universal designated hitter will also be part of helping the pitching get better because it will help us from quickly running out of pitchers. Absolutely. It will. I, I definitely agree. It's going to be easy on the pitchers. It's going to be easier on the pitchers, you know, that way, you know, they could keep the coat on, you know, let's say the April game, you know, it, it's a night game. It's cold. He doesn't have to take his coat off. Uh, it just, it just you know, keeps his arm warm. You know, it's just, it's just, there's little things, man. It's those little things that go really, really go a long way. It can really make a difference, man. They really aren't talked about. They really aren't talked about. I was arguing with a Met, with a Mutz fan. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling you a Cowards fan because you're a Braves fan. Cowards, Atlanta Cowards. On how, uh, on, on who I would rather have, uh, Misek or Diaz. I said I would want Misek because he's more clutch. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that one, man. Yeah, I mean the Mets. I mean they. I mean. And the thing was with, with the Mets is that I, I just like, I don't know. I just think they're just being a little bit, you know, overrated. I, as a, again, another year of them, you know, being very overrated. And 
Uh, their bullpen just doesn't really, you know, impress me a lot. And I still think they have a lot of holes in that bullpen. And Edwin Diaz has just been an absolute disaster. Seth Lugo, I, you know, I know he battled some injuries. It just, it just hasn't been good over there. It just hasn't been good over there. And I definitely have more confidence in the Braves than I do the Mets. Uh, you know, especially, you know, if, but the thing is that they, if the Braves do not get Freeman back, then I think it's pretty neck and neck. But, I mean, they pretty much just have Scherzer and, and DeGrom at the, t- at the top. That's it. I want Trevor Story and Didi traded, but I don't think that'll happen. Uh, I, I just, I just, I don't know. Trevor Story just doesn't impress me. It's not, yeah, as you said, it's not going to happen. The Phillies signed Chris Bryant. I think we should put Bryant at third and make Alec Bum the designated hitter. <laughs> That's some serious preaching right there. I agree. Uh, Philly should try to get. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah, that would be a nice addition. Underrated, underrated. Even though Nolan and we were. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, remember that? What was it? Like the second game um, of 2021. Remember when like we were had like like what was it? Three RBIs. I, I, I'm gonna miss that a little bit. The Mets bullpen is pretty. Yeah, they, I mean, Loop is gone though, dude. I mean, Loop was like really the one that hold that held that bullpen together, and he's gone. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not impressed with. I don't, I'm really not that impressed with their bullpen. It's okay. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not terrible. But I, I just, don't, I don't really. I mean, of course, it's better than the Phillies, but I, I'm not really impressed with their bullpen. They, they lost a couple of guys, man. The Atlanta Cowards, yes, yes, I like that a lot. They have potential. I don't know who you're talking about. It has to start. With the same letter of the team. No, 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 it doesn't. The Atlanta Boo Raves. What? <laughs> I said I say Jimmy Rollins should come out of retirement and play shortstop and Didi goes to DH. Honestly, that would probably be better. At least we do we have an upgrade defensively, to say the least. <laughs> so disgraceful. Like his defense annoys me probably more than his offense. If Alec Bone becomes DH, I think as a member of the Phillies, he should become the National League's version of David Ortiz. Not going to happen. Totally, you know, it goes out saying you know totally different players. And Alec Bone needs to hit, hit the ball over the wall more. He needs, he needs to go. He needs to pull the baseball more. It sounds weird, but he hits. He, he he just pokes things the other way too much. He needs to pull the baseball more. He doesn't do it enough. The Mets game and Noah went two for two at two area. Yeah, I remember that. I think it was like pretty much our only offense of the game. Alec Bohm is a perfect candidate for DH. Preaching right there, man. Preaching. I like that a lot. As a Mets fan, Diaz is dominant for three straight outings and terrible for three straight. I, I've heard a lot of people say that like in non-save situations, he's much better. Um, you know, all I know is that, you know, it's kind of like this. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what that means, but you know, you know, the ball's like, you know, traveling 400 feet, you know, you know, going to dead center. Oh, no, it's just a little pop-up. We had Will Smith as a as closer. I don't think the Phillies – the Phillies uh, – I don't think the Phillies can handle it. I think the name Will Smith would look pretty cool in Philly, but <laughs> – yeah, I agree with you, though. Honestly, I'm not really that impressed by it. I think he's okay. I mean, I think he really signed quick – what was it, last offseason? It was like in, like, November. I already signed with the Braves. That was in 2020. He always threw his world-famous slider – Completely garbage, no movement, and then flat. I got crushed when he tipped his pitches 95% of the season. Yeah, tipping pitches really isn't that. It's effective for some guys if you, like, want to say Trevor Bauer, who just, like, really just flaunts it in your face. But uh, it's really – I just don't really think tipping pitches is the smartest idea. Again, it works for very, very few guys, but it's just – I don't know. I'm just not – I don't really love that idea. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for the uh, uh, pregame recaps. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm disappointed. I'm very, very disappointed. You know, I regretted that trait. I said the Phillies are making a mistake from the very beginning, bro. You know what I mean? Not impressed. Really not impressed. I mean, like, he was really good when we first got him. And then, like, he, like, and then, like, I made a video talking about how good he was. And then after that, he was terrible. <laughs> we still have one more year. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know. If, if we had Will Smith, the Phillies would get so many memes about, it. yeah, yeah, we would. <laughs> There's a lot of Will Smiths in baseball. You know, the catcher of the Dodgers. Um, it's uh, it's just crazy, man. It's a pretty common name now. You know what I mean? It's a pretty common name. He was, well, yeah, he was. But, dude, like, the thing is that, like, the thing that annoys me about all this is that, like, listen, I understand Spencer Howard was a disaster, but, like, we're the ones who drafted him. Like, doesn't that kind of concern you that our scouting director, scouting department drafted him? 
I can understand, yes, we traded, but we, we were the ones that chose him. I, I don't like that. I, for one, do not like that. Just my opinion, man. I did like the Hans Kraus acquisition uh, in that trade. Will Smith wouldn't last in Philly. He'd get yeah, flamed. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be hardcore to play in this city, man. Bryson Scott becomes the Phillies open today short starting scores as a rookie, which I think should happen. And once he makes his first big league at bat, what if he knocked the cover off the ball? I, I just don't see that happening. I mean, the guy is just I, I just love Bryson Scott though. Like he is like the, the, the sweetest swing. Uh, I can't wait to watch him play, but I just at this we, this organization has a problem rushing up prospects too soon. Uh, Alec Bohm, I mean Aaron Nola drafted in 2014, caught up in 2015. Um, it's just we have a history of doing that. I just don't really like it. Better Hoskins or Alonzo? Alonzo. I mean Alonzo is definitely better. Uh, hits for more power. I think that's a, no offense. I think that's a pretty easy answer there. Um, Alonzo definitely is more healthy than Reese Hoskins is. Uh, you know, I just think he's just more consistent. Will Smith is also a name. Of, yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Miami, Miami. Get jiggy with it. The Marlins might finish second. Nah, nah, that's not happening. This division, especially now how tight it is, I, I would be very surprised, especially with Cisco Sanchez. Another setback, right? You heard about that. Another setback for him, you know, and every, all the Marlins fans, the fear, like the two Marlins fans were saying about how, um, you know, how they won the trade. This was before we re-signed JT. And because uh, like, look at Sanchez, he's only not on the field, man. What's going on there? <laughs> you know, not. I don't want. I don't like to see people get hurt, but you know, it's just like the guy is just so overrated. Bryson Scott. I mean, he has he has a lot of potential. I mean, believe me, that guy could throw, man. Like his fastball, but he's just he's been injured. He's just been very, very injury prone. Bryson Scott would be called up, so DD would be would, would be DH. I mean. Honestly, I think you might just see the Phillies. Just, I mean, honestly, I, I, I'm sure that they've just tried to just get – I mean, if they just, like, traded Didi away for, like, some no-name prospect, some random minor leaguer, I think they'd do it just to just dump him for nothing. But it just goes to show you no one wants him. No one wants him. No one wants to eat, to eat you know, $14 million for, you know, you, you know, for one year for a guy with, you know, not just blow, blow average defense, like horrific defense. Uh, you know, just a disaster, man. Like like a 600 OPS. No one, no one wants that, man. No one wants that. You know, 200 average. No one wants that. You know, 285 OBP, probably even lower than that. You know, probably more like, you know, like 250. You know, like that low. But, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Hans Kraus, first pitch was a home. Yeah, I was at that game. I was at that game. Yep. Yep, against Pittsburgh. That was the final home game of the year, Fan Appreciation Day. I was out and getting the cheesesteak at Tony Luke's. Honestly, I want Bryson Scott over DD. I would make DDDH, but yeah, but I want Bone to be DDH. Yeah, but I, honestly, I said this in my video about a month ago. I said there's not going to be a set DH this year. I think it's primarily going to be Bone, but um, there's not going to be like one like like not. It's kind of a, it's not going to be like the Ortiz of the Red Sox, you know, or you know Edwin when he was with you know the Blue Jays and the Indians. You know what I mean? It's not it's not going to be like that. If Scott did knock the cover off the ball, he'd remind me of Ray Hat. Yep, yep. It's pretty hard to do, though. <laughs> well, with his swing, though, it, wouldn't, it probably wouldn't be. Schwarber put him at first, and Hoskins at DH. Yeah, I don't really, I don't, I don't really know if Schwarber's ever seen time at first base. I mean, he's you know a left fielder, so you know usually you know first baseman, left fielder, they can go back and forth. But I mean, that'd be an interesting thing to see. But I, honestly, I, I don't really know if that's something you really try out. Um, but I know, I don't know, is that Joe Madden loves loves to put. You know when you know when uh, Joe Madden was the manager of the Cubs, he always loved, loved to you know you know have all these players to play all these different positions and be goofy. Uh, so I'm sure possibly I don't know this for sure, but I'm sure maybe Schwarber has played first first uh, you know somewhere along his, in his career. I sometimes used to wish to pitch for, or or manage the Phillies as a 12 year old. Yeah, I've always had those dreams, man. Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. Do you think that Wheeler is his peak or could be at the level of the Grom? I think he's at his peak. I mean, the Grom is a whole nother animal. Um, the Grom is doing things that haven't been done. You know, it was doing things that, you know, weren't being done in probably over a hundred years. I mean, it just is insane what this guy was doing and maybe not a hundred years, but it's, it was a really, really long time. I mean, what he was doing, I'm going to say probably like maybe around like June 1st or like late May, man, like that was just like, like history at its finest. Um, you know, like, it was pretty much an automatic win every fifth day when he went out there. Unbelievable. I just respect it. I really, really just really, really respect that. Um, you know, just a total just beast. Switch between DD and Bone. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna see Schwarber get some time there, assuming if we sign him. Zach Campbell is 
probably pissed about the universal DH. He hates it because he it's not traditional baseball. Yeah, but like it's easier on the pitcher. That's why I really like it. Imagine if Bryce Harper hit a homer into the lights or off the Wrigley, the clock at Wrigley Field. Remember that like that towering shot? Remember a three run shot? Uh, it was the first homer he hit with a guy on base. That was um, that was July of 2021. Yeah, that, that was at Wrigley. You need to resign Bamboo Bad, uh, Bamboo Brad, uh, ASAP. Absolutely, I love him. I love him. He was awesome. What was it? 20 home runs. I mean, the guy did get some decent amount of playing time. A platoon player hits 20 home runs. I mean, of course, he didn't hit for the highest average. He strikes out a lot, and he complains a lot when he struck out. But I, I really, really like Brad, uh, Brad Miller. I really, really do. If I, if I, for the Phillies when I was 12, I'd bet I it would remind people of Henley Washington. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. What was that big? What was that? Uh, the movie called? Oh my gosh! It would it have? Um, what was that guy's name? The uh, Oh my gosh, I just can't think right now. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about though. Yeah, what was it, Little Big Leaguer? What's that? What's that movie called? Oh my gosh, gosh, what's that guy's name? Remember, he's in Home Alone too. I forget his name. Uh, the first Home Alone, uh, he was like the announcer. Oh my gosh, John Candy. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think he died like 30 years ago. Yeah, he was a funny guy. Yeah, Brad always complained. <laughs> I, I know he got like ejected like three times, like for just arguing balls, and it was and it was a strike. Yeah. Harper, Harper. Um, I mean, that may be a little bit of a tough one, but I just think I've always kind of thought Mookie Betts was a little overrated. I never really loved the guy. I mean, he's very athletic. He, he's definitely faster than Harper is, but he's, he's definitely probably better, no question, a better defender. But I just like Harper's swagger better. Uh, but from an overall playing standpoint, it's probably pretty close, but I'd still, you know, rather have Harper, even though, uh, you know, Harper is, you know, it's right around the same age. Honestly, to be honest with you, I don't know who's, I, I know all I know is that Harper's 29 and, um, sure. Maybe I, I think Betts is a couple years younger than him. There's no, I don't think there's much question about that. He's probably like 27. That's rookie of the year. A oh, rookie of the year. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But John Candy was in that movie too. He was the announcer. Yeah. But yeah, I love that movie. What was it? The guy in the Mets. Remember the hanging breaking ball? He's like, I had uh, breaking balls for breakfast. Remember that? Do you think a where becoming a free agent was a mistake? No. Easy. No. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah. Remember he was, the, and then he 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 released his like favorite player, and the guy like flipped out at him because what was it like his grandfather died, and like he like left the team for his uh, grandson or something. <laughs> um, I mean, I I kind of already did one in a way. It was a behind the scenes video. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it. I did it probably about maybe a month and a half ago. Yeah, not that long ago. I mean, it's a little over a month ago, and you can go check it out. It's it's still still up there, obviously. Um, so I mean, you know, possibly down the line, you're going to see some different videos this year. You're going to see some breakdown videos of like a really cool moment happens. Where I'm not, you're not even going to see my face. You're just, I'm just. It's going to be almost like a John Blue Media. You're just going to see the clip, and then I'm going to be talking about it. Um, so get ready for those kind of videos as well. I hope you all enjoy those. Uh, it's going to be more interesting. We're going to be doing a lot more live streams. We're going to be getting out there more. I must have missed it. Yeah. Yeah. You should go check it out, man. It's, it was a pretty cool video. I mean, I got a lot of requests to do it. Uh, seemed to be you know, pretty popular. Um, Little Big League also featured real life major league ball players. A real life major manager, Lou Pinella. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a he was a real jerk in that movie. I, I man, he fired him. Right? I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he he was like flipping out. Remember, like he would, you know, like throw stuff on the ground. I guess it was like in real life too, because he was kind of like <laughs> he was like that guy was nuts, man. That guy was just a nut job. Two of two of the ball players it featured were our Randy Johnson and Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, I haven't watched in a while, so I, I don't actually don't know that, um, but. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of good classics out there. You know, these old movies and, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, he did. Yeah, I'd love to see Ben Simmons, though, not to get on the Sixers topic, but, 
you know, getting booed on the bus, you know what I mean? You always wonder if he's really hurt or he just doesn't want to play. He's too scared. What a sissy. No one like no one likes that guy. No one likes that guy. I certainly don't. One of, one of the other films I enjoy is Angels in the Outfield. I, I've never seen that movie. I've heard of it. I uh, don't really know much about it. Um, I don't really know much about, you know, I, I've, I know a lot about baseball movies. I'm just not a big movie guy. Uh, don't really, you know, really watch a lot of movies. Mostly. I'm, I'm more of a TV show guy. Um, I'm more into TV shows. Uh, but, yeah, man, I mean, you know, Phillies baseball right around the corner. Uh, hard to believe. You know, I still kind of feel numb about it, man. I mean, um, you know, I still won't forget what they put us through, but it's over. It's in the past, um, at least for now. Um, and uh, luckily, we'll have to deal with this again for another five years. I mean, I, I don't I, I think in five years, it's going to be much better than you know how it went. Ben Simmons is afraid of the Sixers. I bet he'll play once the playoffs roll around. That's it. The Brooklyn Nets even make the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I was sad to see Curry go, honestly. I mean, but, you know, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I don't know. I just like that. I just like that we had a Curry on the team. You know what I mean? It was kind of cool. I mean, he, he did a good job, but, you know, it was, I mean, Harden is just, he's, he's, he's just awesome, man. Even though the Sixers just got swamped last night, but. Even Moneyball. I love Moneyball. Moneyball is like, that's probably my favorite all time. Maybe not all time. I like 42 as well. Trouble with the Curve. I actually just watched that probably like maybe two months ago. What was that with like Amy Adams and uh, Clint Eastwood? Yeah, I like that. Did you see Did you see Major League? It's my favorite movie of all time. Is that with Tom Cruise? And uh, uh yeah, I've, I've heard of it. I know. I don't think I've ever watched it. I'm upset about Curry leaving too, but at least we have James Harden. Yeah, yeah, it was worth it. It was worth it. I don't know much about Major League. Uh, Sandlot, Sandlot is amazing, classic. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do like that movie as well. Um, you know, just kind of like the backyard, like traditional stereotype. <laughs> yeah, the neighborhood gang. You know, there's some bullies in that movie too. Major League is with, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, I wonder what I was thinking of. Then maybe it's is that the one with the Indians or not? Like the I, I don't know. Ah, oh. <laughs> there's a lot of good quotes from from baseball movies. You know, they've over the years, man. Um, never seen it. Never seen it. Um, again, heard the name. Don't really know much about it. Um, yeah, but I'll probably. I'm I, you know, honestly like I, I should probably go through and watch all these. Uh, Feel that James is, you know, of course, you know, like, it's an all-time classic. The thing about that, I just love the story behind that. Like it's just like it's a very calming movie. I enjoy it. It's just it's just like a it's a it's a very powerful movie. I feel that. I feel like I mean, um, you know, it's a movie with a lot of meaning behind it. Um. You know, a lot of these baseball movies are just really just great movies. Uh huh. Yeah, but is is uh, Tom Cruise? I thought he was in the movie too. I, I maybe I'm wrong. I know he's in some baseball movie. I just can't remember. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I might be just getting it confused again. I'm not. Yeah. Yep. I love that movie. Again, that's like your traditional, like backyard, like neighborhood. You know, pick up, you know, that's like the stereotype everyone thinks of when they think of like, oh, the neighborhood game, you know. Um, so I wonder what movie, he was in some baseball movie, so I don't know. Maybe I just like saw a guy that looked like him and I thought it was him. So I guess, yeah, I guess he's not. Yeah, I mean, I, I know he's in some baseball movie. I, maybe somebody could look that up for me. Uh yeah, so I, I feel like he is. Maybe maybe it's just a guy that looks like him. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Always a classic. I also recently heard Santa is a sports version of Stand by Me. Uh, I did not know that. I did not know that. Charlie Sheen. 
Yeah, I'll look him up right now. Harley Sheen. Yeah. Sheen. Yeah, maybe they look alike. Yeah, you know what, man? I was. They, he does kind of look like Tom Cruise. You have to admit. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was. My bad. Yeah, they kind of look alike. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it was him. That's what I was thinking of. Are the Phillies ever going to make an honest play for a top tier player like Chris Bryant? Well, I mean, they have, in the, you know, of course, you know, in recent, you know, years, you know, of course, with Bryce Harper, you know, JT Muto, but we really need to take that next step. And there's no question about it. But I don't know if Chris Bryant's really the guy you do it for. I did make a video, uh, you know, kind of advocating for the Phillies not to sign Chris Bryant in January. And I've kind of kind of retracted that sense. And I think I just think it makes a lot of sense for us. I really, really do. And I think the price is right, especially now with the slack of being over. There's motivation to get a deal done. These guys don't want to be showing up to camp super late. They want to be playing. Uh, I don't really don't know if there's a, a lot of. I don't really know if he has a lot of you know you know teams waiting for him. I really really don't. I mean, I think that uh, you know maybe the Giants would inquire on him. You know, try to get him back. Um, I, I think that's possible. Uh, but uh, maybe the Mariners look to you know add another bat. Um, I, I don't know. I know. I just. I, I definitely think it's a possibility. It's because of coming age. Uh huh. Yeah, they do. Yeah. No, that's my. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just got it confu confused. Bruce Harper, Bruce Hooper <laughs> needs help. He does, man. How about Ronald uh, Afulia? I think, you know. <laughs> he was injured from carrying the team too much last year. I, I assume he meant to say last year. Yeah, honestly, man, I just think it took a toll on him. I mean, and he still won MVP, man. You know, and uh, I give him a lot of credit, man, because honestly, going in there day in and day out with this team is not fun. I could just tell you right, right now. It's not fun. It's brutal. Brutal. Oh, bad news, Bears. I haven't really, I've, I, again, I've heard the name. I've seen clips. So I think it's like the Little League movie, right? Was that the, the movie where the kid was like stand, like filming on the center field fence and the guy like told me like, you got to leave or whatever? I think maybe, maybe I'm getting that confused with another movie. I haven't seen these movies in like so long. Probably in like when I was like in fifth grade. It's been a while. I'm a senior in high school now. <sighs> what was it like? The the coach like got fired or something? Bad news bears. I, I don't even know. Man, I think there is a movie that like the kid was like hanging on the fence with like a camera or something. And I told him, "Oh, you got to leave. Like you can't do that." Or something like that. The kid got in trouble. They lose to the Marlins too much and other bad teams. Like the Diamondbacks, Pirates. Otherwise, they would have made the playoffs multiple times, 100%. In 2020, not to harp back on it again, but they go down to Tampa. Number one, they have all these blown saves. And uh, they go down to Tampa against a team that's already clinched every spot you could probably get, and they still get swept out. It's disgraceful. Well, like Willie Mays and Hit and Karen. Oh, you're preaching. A.K.A. not Roman Quinn, who just runs like Willie Mays. Yeah. Yeah, Roman Quinn's kind of a head case. I think he just deactivated his Instagram. Yeah, because I, I, I went to go, like, I don't know. I, like, I was on an old post the other day, and I tagged him in it, and, like, you go click on it, it said user not found. Or, so, I don't know. I, I didn't say anything to him. I don't think he blocked me for just no reason. So, I imagine, I don't think it was anything I did. Hi, uh, you're my favorite YouTuber. Thank you, man. Thank you. If you were a general manager or president of baseball operations, who would you be? Who would be your additions to left field, center field, bench players in the bullpen and bench? Well, left field. I mean, I'm going after Schwarbaum, Kyle Schwarber. Gets on base a lot. Not very good defense, but uh, this the the in our in our little sandbox. I mean, he just would absolutely rake. And center field, I think you can go a lot of different ways. Do you call the Baltimore Orioles about Cedric Mullins? I think you do stay away from Kevin Kiermeyer, um, but uh, you know I think the guy like maybe like a little like you know I I, I don't even want to use the word stopgap because like we don't really have a future in center field. The the market out there has been weak for a while, and that was one of the Phillies' biggest weaknesses in 2021, um, and really honestly in 2022 or 2020 as well. I mean the 2020 season. Um, uh, I mean, do you maybe go and sign Kevin Pillar? I mean, possibly. I mean, I don't really know, man. The center field is the biggest question mark for me. 
Um, you know, maybe you take a chance on Victor Robles. I don't really like that idea. It doesn't really sit well with me. Uh, bench players, you got to bring back Brad Miller. I would just love to bring him back. I mean, you saw what he did, uh, you know, you know, platooning off the bench and, you know, playing all these different positions as I just talked about maybe like 10 or 15 minutes ago, you know, 20 homers. I think I was just, uh, I'm not going to say raking, but, you know, guy hit like 220. Uh, but as a bench player, I definitely was really impressed with him. I think you got to bring him back. I, th- I really think you got to bring him back. I mean, we lost a lot of our bench players, like yours. I mean, bench players, you know, usually kind of a year year basis. You know, Travis Gronkowski has gone, you know, guys like that. You know, Matt Joyce was an absolute disaster. Um, so uh, I think there's a lot of markets you got, you can go out there and explore. Uh, the bullpen needs a complete and utter overhaul, which I just don't think we have time to do uh, in just, just, short, just such a short period of time. Uh, I think Kenley Jansen would be a great addition to the bullpen, though. However, I think that would be uh, you know, a nice thing as the closer. I think that that would really help solidify it. And I'm also, we have a lot of young arms in there that I do think could work out. But enough of these, oh, this, this could work out. No, we need something that will work out. We need to have confidence in our guys, in our bullpen. And we haven't for a while now. We haven't uh, for a while now. Uh, so it's not good. It's not good. And I would go on and on and on about who I think would be the best and this and this and that. But I just got to keep going here. Uh, imagine if the Phillies had a homegrown first baseman that could tribute for us by becoming the next Albert Pujols. Yeah, well, honestly, I think that Reese Hoskins has said this probably, you know, probably over the past year. I think he's a few two weeks away from being one of the best first basemen in baseball. If he could just get that defense uh, to a better level, if he could just stay on the field more and not be so inconsistent um, and, uh, you know, homer on a more consistent level. Uh, and be cons- get it. it just all comes down. It all comes down to uh, to consistency with Reese Hoskins. Also, if he can get on base on a more consistent level, I think he can be very, very good. He can be very dangerous when he goes in the stretch. He can be one of the best players in baseball, man. It, I, we've seen him, man. We've seen it. Do you ever see that Family Guy cut, cut away from Griffin? Griffin says the Phillies won. If not, you need to see it. No, I've not seen that. I'll, I'll look that up. Mets fan acting like Scherzer, Negrom, best one-two of all time. Well, it's, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty historic. Uh, but the, like, the, here's the thing. And, here's, and I think you're probably going to agree with me on this. But, like, Scherzer, like Degrom, Scherzer. And then, like, boop. Like, that doesn't mean they, all they talk about is Degrom and Scherzer. Like, and they don't ever don't ever mention who comes after. What, what Jordan? Uh, wait, what's his name? Uh, oh my gosh, P, uh, Peterson doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I I know his last name is Peterson. Can't believe I can't. I'm, I'm just really tired tonight. Can't think of names. Scherzer era versus Phillies 2.5, 14-4 record. Yeah, he's very good against us. Wow. Yeah. Well, the Braves have had a better team since you know 2015 when he's been you know in the NL East. Of course, had that little brief stint in the NL West in 2021. The Mets have so many veterans. I don't know how I feel, but I know, dude, they're so overrated every single year. Like this is the year they don't do anything to Matt. This is the year. No, 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 it's not. The year. This is the, it's like, always, it's always the year. They never do anything. Watch them mess it up again. Of course, Buck Showalter is a good manager. I will give him that. Or imagine if the Phillies had a homegrown center fielder that showed promise for them by becoming the next Ken Griffey Jr. Oh man, this is all sounds great, but I just, that's why I'm really bummed that Adam Hayes, of course, Adam Hayes, he was never going to be a Ken Griffey Jr. I was really disappointed, you know, obviously, but I was really disappointed that he didn't work out. I mean, there's still a slim chance he could, but I, I doubt it. I doubt it. The blow it. I love it. It's 2015 prime example. Yep. 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 Honestly, I, I think they probably should have lost in that 2015 World Series. And then, of course, they did. Um, the, the Royals were a better team that year. It's hard to believe the Royals were. On the World Series seven years ago, Mets fans remind me of Cowboy fans. Every year they think it's I I know, and but like not only do they think it, but the whole like MLB Network, all the fans think it too. Oh, you know they like it's just so stupid. Like Star Marte is getting older, you know how who knows how much he has left. It. And Max Scherzer was he thirty seven years old? Like this is not like some young team. Like I forgot who just who just said they have too many. Vet- I think it was you. Yeah, they've too many veterans. You're exactly right. Uh, they just keep building on a collapse foundation. Steve Cohen, keep doing it, man. I, I'm telling you, good. Oh man, yeah. 2007 was the best. Of course, you know, fortunately, I wasn't a, around, you know, as a fan to see that. Of course, I was born during that time, but I just, you know, wasn't a fan back then. I was only like three years old. But uh, yeah, that was just awesome, man. 
2021 was really cool though because you know we were the ones that knocked them out of first. You no, know, that was it, man. That was the last time they were first. We were the ones that knocked them out. That was, and then you're, we were in there for like briefly, and then your Braves took over. Probably gonna call it a stream here in like maybe five minutes, going on about 45 minutes. Um, I'd like to thank you all for for tuning in tonight. Again, we'll go for another like five minutes. Uh, but yeah, I, it's going to be interesting to see how this division plays out. Uh, I do not see the Phillies winning the division. I don't. They still have a lot of work to do, man. They still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, and if, and again, like people keep complaining. Like I'm not been a big fan of what Dave's done, but who can complain? Like, oh well, nothing's been done, and you know wh where's the moves? Like, dude, like it like literally just happened like 24 hours ago. What do you like, Dave? Like, be like all day like working, man. I mean, come on. It's just putting on a Mets uniform. A Mets uniform, it changes you physically and mentally. <laughs> yeah, man. You could say that also for anybody that's in the Phillies bullpen. I agree 100%. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Juan Rojas. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm glad you got me talking about him. I mean, also, looking. I, I love him, man. I love him. I, a lot of a lot of people think he might be the next Juan Soto. Wouldn't that be something? And that guy, like, he he crushes the ball, man. Another guy with a really, like, a this a uh, – Really awesome, sweet swing, man. I don't know if you ever watched the film on him, man. Oh my gosh, love him. Is sick of it. Oh lord, there's a there's a deep drive to right center field, and it is gone. Yeah, and the Phils take the lead. the The Tom McCarthy laugh is what really gets me, man. Has <laughs> that, that the, the chuckle? <laughs> Oh man, I, I don't even know. Soto is a gener new generation. Oh, 100 percent. One thing I will say though, is that like Harper's being underrated again. Like he wins MVP last year, and like they did a top ten like players to look for. Like I mean, I love Juan Soto and everything. Like I think he's an amazing talent, but like like Harper won MVP last year. You, like you can't at least put him like number two. I mean, like the guy won MVP. Like, oh, he did have a better unit, so it was pretty neck and neck. It could have went either way, but he won MVP, won on Karen. I, I don't understand why, like, they did, well, the baseball, the baseball industry hates him. They, they hate him. Nah. Uh -huh. I missed the sweet sound of, yeah. This ball is. I don't call Hooper overrated. Yeah, I'm not saying you did. No, your buddy, what was it, uh, the the Atlantic Atlanta fan central, whatever his name is. <laughs> he called him overrated. Ted Williams is the greatest hitter who ever lived. Yeah, I mean he's definitely one of them. I mean, he would have hit four hundred in a year. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, he was just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Imagine how much better like he would have been. Of course he was remembered as one of the best players of all time if he didn't go away for service, man. From his past of whining and complaining about strikes. I'm assuming you're talking about Harper there. Yeah. But he's going up a little bit. Harper is perfectly rated. Hates. Haters are so annoying. I agree, man. I think he's still being a little undervalued, if we might fit in. I mean, guy had an historic gear last year. Not not like 2015, but 20, the 2015 Harper is a lot to ask for. But, like, man, this is great. This is why I was really bummed that this season was going to be, like, another compromised short year because, like, we had to experience, experience, this, experience this in 2020. And like this is prime time for Harp right now, man. Like this is like the like the supposed to be like the the prime of his career. I mean, how many years do we have left of like this production of Harp, man? Was it like maybe like four or five years if we're lucky? I mean, I don't know. Harper is going to be a guy to age age as well. Yeah. No, he think he thought that Austin Riley should have won the twenty twenty one NL MVP. I mean, no knock to the guy, but like in fairness, he said I'm a homer before he said it. So like, okay, that kind of dilutes a little bit, but you can't get away with saying that, man. Come on. Ted Williams become became the last player to hit 400 in a full season. Same year, Joe DiMaggio had the 56 game hit streak. Yep. Tony Gwynn would have done it. What was it, 94? Maybe would have done it. I agree too. Do you think Bryant will go to the Phillies? 
I, I think it just I think there's a chance. I think there's a good I think there's a good chance just with the Harper connection. You might want to take a discount because the lockout is now officially over. He's eager to sign, get to camp, get ready. He says, "What did Harper do for his team?" Yeah, but like. It's, it can't fall on all his shoulders. This isn't the NBA where, you know, one guy can go out there and have the team win. Yeah. Billy sure could use another guy with five full talent in their lineup. 100%. Gone. It, it is gone. Both are gone. Well, I, I, yeah, the run of seconds gone. Yep. And the seven ain't no better. No, I didn't. I don't know what you're saying no to. I guess you're answering Ethan's question. Yeah. Yeah, you want me to stay on another five minutes? I will, if you want me to. Because we're at that time now where I said five more minutes. Now it's been five more minutes. If you want me to stay on another five minutes, and <sighs> Gibby. Yeah, Gibby coming off clutch again. He always likes to tune in here. Yeah. He was a Cowards fan. Really doing a good job there. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm really excited. I renewed my season tickets today. Um, really excited for the season. Not going to opening day this year. I really don't go to opening day usually. Too many people. Too cold. But Harper's going to be hosting the you know MVP trophy above his head, which is going to be really awesome. Cowards, what's that? <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, maybe in your eyes. How about the Foolies, though? Surprised you didn't call us the Sillies. I think the Sillies would have been a better name, if you want my opinion. I think the Philadelphia Sillies. I think I like that better. Kind of fits, kind of ties in with the bullpen, you know. You know. Uh, so, all right, guys. I think it's going to do it uh, for tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have uh, not liked this video, please like it now. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, do all that stuff. So, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please don't forget your bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, check out the social media. Link in the description section at Philly Science Stove Media, Instagram, take it to Instagram. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Piat Stove Media. Call or text 267 225 3092. Email me, Philly Science Media at gmail.com. So, the Philly Science Stove Outline is coming back. I'm not too sure when. You know, definitely when the season starts. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I am Luke, and I'll talk to you later. I'll see you guys.